Central Asian Craft Yurts In ancient times, amongst nomads, the word yurt didn't actually refer to a dwelling, but something like campsite, or more broadly, community, people, existence. There was a separate word for home. In Kyrgyz, it would be boz-i, meaning a nomad's dwelling. The word became widespread much later thanks to European travelers visiting Central Asia. But the semantics of these words are so subtly and symbolically intertwined, and the fact that they have merged into one meaning reflects the freedom-loving philosophy of nomadic civilizations. Our home is wherever our people are, and that is what defines our existence. <laughs> As a kid, I grew up in a yurt. My grandfather was a shepherd. I spent all my summer vacations with him. I still remember how my grandfather would tell me bedtime stories. I would fall asleep looking at the stars through the tunduk. Juldiz and her family have been working in the tourism industry for 29 years. Since 2014, they've been hosting tourists in yurts at her ethno-village Almalu, which they built from the ground up with their own two hands. Tourists say that after staying in a yurt, they feel reborn. All the stress of city living that's built up over the years gets washed away in the waters of Isikul. The land where the yurt stands is imbued with a positive energy. The air here has a healing effect. And there's a fire where you can cook meals made from organic ingredients. All of this is what tourists appreciate the most. But that's not because it's fashionable or because of the popularity of ecotourism, but because they're keeping to how their ancestors lived for centuries. No synthetic materials are used in the yurt and its decorations. Juldiz carefully checks that every detail strictly corresponds to the canons that have been established over the centuries. Since 2014, Kyrgyz and Kazakh yurts have been included in the UNESCO representative list of intangible cultural heritage. Because yurts are the ultimate symbol of nomadic civilization, the tradition of yurt making must be passed down to future generations. This kitty gear is over a hundred years old. We found it at our friend's place, who wanted to burn it. We took it here and put it up as an exhibit. It's made using a very old technique covered with a special paint called josho, clay mixed with horse blood. The wood was smoked over a fire made from cattle dung, which explains why it survived so well. We revive and preserve traditions, holding various workshops so that our national crafts continue to survive. For the decoration and insulation of the yurt, we do everything ourselves. In the village, there's a workshop producing traditional Kyrgyz felt carpets, ala kiyiz, and shirdak, wool we buy from local farmers. We do everything by hand. We are grateful to our ancestors for this knowledge, which we cherish and strive to pass on to future generations. We want to tell the whole world about nomadic culture. I believe that a yurt could solve the problem of housing shortages in many countries. It can be disassembled and assembled easily in just a few hours, and it's mobile, taking up little space during transportation. That's why we'd like to export yurts abroad. Kyrgyz crafts are something we can be proud of.